Amen, amen, blessings and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, power and might belong to our God forever and ever. Amen, 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 blessings and glory. Wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, power and might belong to our God forever and ever. Amen. And I panicked. I quickly came to your office and told you they are seeing. On arrival, Emmanuel is going to be arrested. You told me, leave it to me. I went. When that day arrived, I went to the airport to meet Emmanuel, sat and waited in the, VI, in the VIP lounge, and waited, panicking, not knowing what was going to happen. <laughs> to my surprise, I'm relieved. I saw Ndugurugunda coming through the arrivals, holding Emmanuel by the hand, bringing him to me safely. It's like he went and picked him from the aircraft. I'm forever grateful. I don't know whether you remember that day. I'm forever grateful. That is the brotherly gesture they have with those people. I mean, even the other day, Honorable Amama mentioned how uh, his flight was full and how almost had to relinquish his own seat for him so that he can travel. That is how they are, those people. Emmanuel loved us as a family, both the core and the extended. He supported whoever approached him with a need. When I discovered how much Emmanuel loved his family, I made our home open to them. There was nowhere they could not access. Isn't that true? Most of them had lived with us before they got to their own homes. Like Joseph Mutevire just left my home when he met Grace. Patrick Tibbs when he met Patricia. They all lived with us. He also loved my family and the people of Toro. And of course, my other family from Bunyoro, they, they were Vito. And the Vator, of course, gave him a pet name. In the Toro, you must have a pet name, otherwise we don't know how to address you. We don't address people by their names. Emmanuel used to call me Amoti. And so they gave him the name Apuli. <laughs> when my mother aged, she came and lived with us until she rested. Emmanuel took very good care of her, and she has attended to very many of my family. Emmanuel was very generous. And he could give beyond one's expectation. This, of course, many have testified to it. Indeed, as I said earlier, he's a man that kept his word, as the recommendation was. When he said he was going to do something, even if the situation was not convenient, he would go out of his way and honor that commitment. And if you asked him, but why, Emmanuel, are you doing that? He would say, I have already given my word, and I cannot go back on it. He would rather suffer the pain than disappoint the person he considered, uh, rather, rather than disappoint another person. He considered other people before himself. And I, later I discovered, of course, the Bible teaches us that there is a scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter uh, 3, verse 12, which says, there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live. And that's what Emmanuel did. Emmanuel was a washpa. I remember whenever time would come home for Christmas in Kabali, he would join the night angels. You know the, night, the children, I don't know, of course they, they cannot be doing that right now. They go home to home singing Christmas carols. And Emmanuel would take over uh, conducting them and of course they would end up home or sometimes at the White House Inn. He's the one who used to read scriptures for us at home every night 
following our daily guide. He was a Christian who was God-fearing. You know, there are Christians who, don't, who are not God-fearing, but he was one who practiced it. He was God-fearing and really practiced his faith. He respected all people, regardless of their religious beliefs. I remember at home before COVID, there was a group of charismatic Catholics who would come and pray uh, once a week with us, and yet we are very strong Anglicans. Of course, even you would, the parties as you have, as Ndugu has testified, he would respect anyone, regardless of the party they belong to. So at this time, I would like to bring my appreciation. First of all, of course, our appreciation goes to the Almighty God, uh, who gave us Emmanuel. For the years he has given us to live with him. For the gifts that God put in Emmanuel. And how Emmanuel has impacted our lives. Many of us are standing as a result of his involvement in our lives. Those he educated. Those he sponsored to go for treatment. Those he sponsored for weddings. Those, I mean, name it. We appreciate you, Emmanuel but we appreciate God who enabled you to do so. We thank, of course, again, we, has, we thanked him, the president, on the other day when we were at Kololo. We continue to thank the president of the Republic of Uganda for entrusting Emmanuel with leadership in the various uh, leadership posts, including the stewardship of the Central Bank for over the 20 years. But above all, for giving him this colorful, wonderful, magnificent send-off. And Emmanuel would have loved this. I thank the Bank of Uganda, both the board, management, and staff. You know, when we came to the bank, the bank became our family. Everyone comes home freely, we share meals, we pray together. They really became family. I thank you, Bank of Uganda, for the way you supported Emmanuel, the way you loved him and cared for him. All of you, if I began to mention names, I don't know. There are so many of you. I mean, when I talk of the staff, I think of his driver, John. John, when we came to the bank, was given to me, to be my driver, I don't know whether it was because he's a motor, I don't know. But when I discovered that he was a very caring, patient, good driver, I said, no, better go and drive Emmanuel. So John has been driving Emmanuel for all these years that Emmanuel has been in the bank. Uh, there was, of course, Mr. Musoke, they talked about him, who came with him from finance. His uh, secretary, Lillian, who worked for him from finance to BOU and of course now the current religion. We appreciate you all. There are these boys, I don't know whether they were personal assistants, there was Raf, Akura, and they were always making sure they are by the governor because as doctor explained when he developed the neuropathy, he needed support because he was vulnerable to fall any time. So I thank you all and all the people that attended him uh, in the office. I thank the medical team of Bank of Uganda who have attended to Emmanuel's medical needs over the years. It's been a long time, I cannot even count. There used to be Dr. Kagwa, and later, of course, Dr. Anseruko, and recently, Dr. Waiso and Dr. Makanga from the Bank of Uganda. And every time I would call, regardless what time in the night, Dr. Wesa would be there. I really appreciate you. Of course, as time went on, I needed a nurse. So we had a nurse all the time at home. And there was this recently, Sister Rose, 
very, very, very committed and caring for Emmanuel. Sister Rose, wherever you are, we do appreciate you. And before her, there was, of course, Sister Diana. And Diana, much as she retired, continued being in our life. When she discovered Emmanuel loved Millet, she always made sure she brought Millet for Emmanuel all the time. Diana, thank you very much. And Mr. Odongo, the dialysis nurse, we thank you. The doctors, we had a group on, on, on WhatsApp, and I named it Ebenezer. The word Ebenezer means, thus far, the Lord has brought us. The team was being led by Professor Otim, of course, with Dr. Mbonyi, Dr. Kagwa, and all these were mentioned earlier, and the bank doctors. And they are always home doing the panel of doctors meeting to discuss way forward of Emmanuel's treatment. Dr. Ambony, we do, uh, you know that we appreciate you. We really do. And you take our appreciation to the others who are not here. The last time in 2020, about March, because Emmanuel had had a fall and he had a problem uh, above his skull, so he needed immediate uh, attention and they needed to rush him to Nairobi as usual. Professor uh, Lule said, yeah, come. But because of COVID, there is a young doctor who came called Dr. Senyonga, and he said he will not make it. And he said he was going to do uh, the operation. He did it and was successful. We thank, we thank God that he was able to use the young man, Dr. Senyonga. God has given us good doctors in this country. We really must appreciate them. I would like to thank, of course, our church at home, the All Saints Church in Kampala, for the spiritual support. And, of course, the clergy and choir. And, of course, whenever time we are in Kavali, we would be attending the St. Peter's Rugarama or St. John's in Kijuguta. Emmanuel was a church person, and I had to support him. He had a very close relationship with all the bishops in this area, beginning with even the late Bishop Kivenger and his family. And then, of course, uh, Bishop Ruchirande, who used to be our guest whenever time he came to Kampala those many years. Then Bishop Katwe CJ, and then Bishop Kaye, and now Bishop Ragamhonda. Emmanuel loved all these people. You would think they were brothers. We thank you for loving him. I appreciate all the people that have been praying for us from our different fellowships, the pastors and all the people that have been praying. But in particular this time, let me appreciate a young man who comes from this area. This boy told me that God put it upon his heart to come and pray for Emmanuel in Nairobi. And he's called Kevin Buana, bought himself a ticket. He came and prayed for Emmanuel, prayed with us. Prayed with us, and, and he left. Kevin, I don't know whether you are here, but we appreciate, um, we appreciate you for that. I appreciate, of course, our domestic staff at home. Some people used to tell me, oh, Emmanuel is very smart. But there's this young man called Stephen Onyango, who has been with us, I don't know how many years, for very, very many years, maybe 30, I don't know. He's the one who attended to his shirts, his suits. Thank you very much. And the chefs, of course, the current one is Kateriga. And formerly it was Zosmas. They have already thanked Zosmas. We thank you all. I appreciate all our family members the children and their spouses. I appreciate a young girl called Grace Mopwana. Are you here? Yeah. This girl has lived with me. How many years? Over, over 30 years. Almost 30 years. The, recently, when Emmanuel was in hospital, I was with her at night. And so Emmanuel was in pain, those excruciating pain in the feet. So we didn't sleep, we are awake. And so in the morning, Emmanuel said, from now on, I'm going to call you Glorious, because she was awake all night. So I told her from now on, she's called Grace, she's going to be called Glorious. Thank you, Grace. She's, an, she's uh, their cousins with Emmanuel. I would like, of course, 
thank the new spouses, the spouses that have come into our homes. There is Hillary, there is Laban, and many others. But these two, they, they were even in Nairobi when Emmanuel passed, and they were the men we had, to, they were together with General uh, Timothy. So they were the men we had to support us, otherwise it would have been very difficult. We appreciate the large Amotelide family for the unity we have had over the years. At this time, let me uh, appreciate Mrs. Uh, Beatrice Mokwana. She was, she was sitting near me there. She is the only surviving auntie of Emmanuel. She's the young sister to the late Mose Wilson Mutevire. She is the mother of this girl. I understand she contributed to Emmanuel's education. Mai Wanyala Navi. Thank you very much. I do thank the brothers and sisters. They are a large family as you saw them, but we have really lived in unity. Like I told you, our house was open for them and we have lived in unity. Emmanuel being the head of family and for me, of course, doing everything that he expected me to do or what I thought he would want me to do so that we live in harmony. I thank you for causing that to happen. Otherwise, you could have made, you could easily have made one's life uncomfortable, but I thank you. We believe, believe that peace with each other. I appreciate, of course, the people from Tora once again for loving my husband. And even the king himself is a friend to the governor. The queen mother was with us at the vigil. <sighs> Emmanuel too loved them and treated them with the respect they were to expect. You know, when it required kneeling, would you believe it? Emmanuel would kneel down. He would kneel for my mother. He would kneel for the king. Amuchiga kneeling down. If that man was really humble. But it's because of the love that he had. And besides, it wouldn't change who he is. <sighs> Friday, I said two ladies who uh, call Emmanuel son to them. I made a mistake. I forgot there was there is a third one. The third one is the late Nina Madivani, Nitin's mom. Even when Nitin came, he said he's going to sit where the family is sitting. Nitin and Mary Lou, are you there? Can you hear me? Nitin and Mary, Mary Lou Madivani. The, their mother, Nitin's mom, would call, you may take your seat, called Emmanuel, my son. I found when they already knew each other. And she went to be with the Lord just a few months ago. May her soul rest in peace. In, in peace. And the two other ladies are Mama Maria Obote and Indugo explained that relationship. And of course, Mama Teresa Mbiri. Mama Teresa, I was present when she told Charles that Emmanuel is your brother. And indeed, Mbiri has been a brother. He was at home doing all the preparations before we came. I would like, of course, to thank the medical team from Nakasero Hospital that has been attending to Emmanuel over the years, led by Dr. Mboni. There is another doctor I would like to thank in absentia, Dr. Opalot from South Africa at one time. Emmanuel was rushed to South Africa and this Ugandan in that hospital took very good care of him. And even now, every time he comes to, to Uganda, he makes sure he comes to check on us. Recently, he sent me uh, a portable oxygen concentrator because I wanted to have it just in case I needed it. I thank those that came to visit when we were at the hospital in Nairobi. Even before Nairobi, in Abu Dhabi. Amos Inzei did come to the hospital when we were in Abu Dhabi. Uh, Dr. Adam Mugume and the team came to visit when we were at the hospital. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. And those that came when we were in Nairobi hospital, of course, the deputy governor, I already mentioned it, did come. He sat with us for a long time. Emmanuel didn't live much longer after he left. The family, of course, 
these in-laws, these children, the sons-in-laws did come and were with us. And our family members, I don't have to mention those names, but, you know, I had kept on calling Timothy from day one, General Motelire Sabit. From day one, when Dr. Moni told us that Imani was to be evacuated, the first thing I did, I called the General. I said, General, where are you? They are taking Imani to Nairobi. Come and go with him. He said, no, you call Noel. And of course, Noel was willing to come. But when we went to Nairobi, when he kept on going down, I said, Timothy, come. Timothy, come. But little did I know that the Lord wanted Timothy to come at the time when he was really, really needed. Because when he was, well, for as long as Emmanuel was in ICU, he wouldn't have done much. So he came at the time, and as soon as he came, Emmanuel passed. And so he was needed to do all those other errands, which I would not have been able to do. Thank you so much, Timothy. His wife and other wives of the brothers were also there at the time. Thank you very much. Of course, uh, Dr. Mbonya told you about Professor Rule. I would like to thank him. He was passionate because he had treated him many years back and he knew him. I think they were together at campus. <sighs> Professor Rule called me one time that when Emmanuel was not well at night. So I said, Professor, um, I told him in Luganda, so, Dr. Nganti Day. He also told me that broke my heart. From that moment on, I suspected that money wouldn't make it. I would like, of course, to thank our friends in Kenya who were there for us during the, uh, when we were nursing Emmanuel, Eunice Kagania, former Central Bank uh, person, and Mrs. Grace Mley, wife of a former Central Bank governor, Dr. Mley. I would like to thank the Central Bank governor himself, Dr. Patrick Injorogi. He did not only visit Emmanuel, but was with us at the time of departure. We thank them. We would like to thank the government officials and family and friends that came to receive us at the airport. We would also like to thank all the people in Kigezi because now you love the manual. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate. And you know, all of you, whoever came, our home was open for you. I thank all you, all of you that have come today to honor Emmanuel. I know that there are very many of his friends who are gathered here today, some of them we may not see, who have traveled from very far. I remember Honorable Amama told me that that flight was full. Some of those people were coming to celebrate Emmanuel with us today. Wherever you are, we do appreciate you. Wherever Emmanuel is, I'm sure he's seeing you. Thank you so much for coming to celebrate Emmanuel on this day. Thank you. And you know, all these people who have come, they have been, of course, working in Emmanuel in one way or another. But somehow, Emmanuel had a way of making the people that he works with be like his friends. And so because he treated them as friends, I also treated them as friends. And so we know that you are here, not only as colleagues, but as friends. Thank you so much for coming. And of course, there are those who have sent their testimonies on phone. I don't know. But we thank you. I would like to thank, of course, Honorable Bahati, Honorable Barrio Munsi, for all the work that you have done ever since Emmanuel went home to be with the Lord. We thank the team that has been on the ground working because this is the only time in my life that I have not had to plan any function at our residence. Thank you very much. Uh, lastly, I would like to thank God for the life I have had with Emmanuel. I know I'm going to miss him, but I know he's in a better place, free from pain, because he accepted Jesus Christ as his savior. And uh, Reverend Bennett Muhairo and Patrick Tibbs can testify to this when Emmanuel, as an act of his own will, uh, received, uh, invited Jesus Christ to come into his life to be his Lord and savior. Um, May his soul rest in eternal peace. Apuli uh, Manuel, I know you are not coming back. It is me. I will find you where you are. 
Praise the Lord. I want to sing this chorus. I know my voice is not good, but I'm going to sing it. The chorus that we always sang whenever time we finished praying, and it goes. You may join me, those of you who know it. Amen, amen, blessings and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, power and might belong to our God forever and ever. Amen, 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 blessings and glory. Wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, power and might belong to our God forever and ever. Amen. And he would say, and that comes from Revelation chapter 7, verse 12. Bye. Indeed. Now, um, Come and introduce the in-laws quickly. Who is it? Who is it? Where had you gone? 